What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, and the overall market. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed a 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. If you deposit $2,000 or more, you're guaranteed 40. The offer ends very soon in just two days. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the markets. Looking at SPY, this far we're doing a good job at holding up, trying to push higher. But just look at this resistance right here at this 582 area. We'll be watching to see how this ends up reacting. Now, just know we have some big tech earnings after the market closes. I'll go over more uh, details about that in my later video. That's going to be my video before the market closes. Um, so I'm going to just uh, upload that a little bit later. But for now, we're going to be looking at this data. So the jobs openings numbers were a little bit below expectations. Consumer confidence was above expectations. And job quits were very close to expectations. So everything was so-so except for job openings being a little bit short. Besides that, um, there wasn't really much else that came out. Despite the data not being the strongest for job openings, the market still got bought back up because job quits were not too bad, I believe. And, you know, the market is very manipulated. So it's always just them manipulating stocks and then using data as an excuse. So like if CPI is hot, sometimes the market could pump, sometimes it dumps. The market's not always very logical. So that's the reason why, uh, you know, with data, it's not always just about what the data is giving us, but what, but what kind of reaction we get and what these institutions are trying to play. So in this case, as soon as this data came out, despite the numbers not looking that great, they're just kind of like so-so, they use that as an excuse to pump the markets. And that's why the market's back up to where we are at. Uh, it is led by machines. We're trading with algorithms and robots. And they're the ones who are, once again, buying up the market a little bit more. So despite that, I do want to give you guys my insights on what I think for the markets. Let me be very blunt with you guys. So for the short term, the market's range bound. It is possible we try to push even higher, you know, approaching the election. It's always a possibility. However, however, I don't believe the move is going to last forever. I still believe we have gaps to fill below and the market setting itself up for a bigger move to the downside. I still believe in this wedge uh, that looks just like this. You can see how we're trying to ride this wedge higher. Yes, the market could pump more, but my view has not shifted. I still believe in the rising wedge. I think it's still present. And we're going to be watching to see how this ends up developing as time goes on. So my view is the same. There's going to be a big sell-off coming to the markets in the future, but we're not ready yet. The market's still getting bought back up, so we could attempt to rebound for the time being, maybe ride this a little higher. Then we'll see if we get that sell-off later on, possibly after the election. So I just want to give you guys a warning about that. But for now, we haven't lost this key support here to turn more bearish to start the corrective phase. We haven't lost 575 yet. So Spire technically is still in a more bullish phase. We're just range bound right now. Around 578, we love to get bought back up. And around 585, we tend to get rejected. So we're just range bound for now. As of right now, we're getting bought back up a little bit more. So we could get closer to 582. But the market overall is in a range. That's like the bigger trend. We're in a range. Same thing with ES. We have this resistance around the 5,900 area. And our support where we're getting bought back up is around the 5,830s. The range bound going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If we lose 5,830, we're looking for a dump back down to the lower 5,800s. If we break past 5,880, we're looking for a big pump. We had a high here, came down, made a lower high, came down, made a lower high, which is happening over and over and over again. If we make a lower high again, we could continue to dump lower towards 58.33. So there is a risk of that potentially happening again on ES. So just keep that in mind, guys. There's a risk of this continuing to downtrend. If we make lower highs, we could continue to dip. So just remember that very, very carefully. So as far as ES goes, uh, we are range bound right now. This may attempt to push a little bit higher to 58.80, but we're still stuck within this range. So I'm not really expecting a whole lot else to happen. We're just going to be very patient with this, at least nonetheless. Um, but that's what I'm seeing, at least for ES, at least moving forward. Looking at other tickers out there, such as NVIDIA, just know that as far as the market is developing, um, NVIDIA right over here is also range bound. Uh, NVIDIA dips to about just a little bit over 138, very close to my target. I was talking about when the 138s could be coming. We had 138.9, so it came very close. And then now we're getting bought back up. So we have resistance at 140.7. And then we're just basically range bound between 144 and 138. So as we had 138 to 140, we do like to get bought back up. And the closer we get to 144, we do like to reject. This looks like it might attempt to rebound higher for 142, but then I just think we're range bound for now. And we're waiting for earnings to cause a much bigger move. For Bitcoin, 
And charts bullish. We're looking for basically 72,000 as our target. We'll see if that breaks or not, but just keep that in mind. For other factors out there, we have um, going back to like Tesla. Tesla is consolidating. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not consolidating. It's dipping. Excuse me, guys. We are looking more bearish right now. Tesla was due to do this. It's not really a big surprise. So here's a simple way to look at it. Um, we have this right over here that's going on. Um, because we're below 260, if we can't reclaim it, we have a risk of coming down to about 256. And then we have 252 below that if that ends up failing us. So just keep those levels in mind. 256 is our next potential target. We have 260s resistance and then 262.5. But overall, Tesla looks a little bit more bearish. It could be dipping back down to 256. NQ is trying to pump higher. It does look a little bit more bullish looking at resistance at 20,600. Breakdown, then we're looking for 20,650. If we lose 20,511, we're looking for a dip, but this does have a little bit more upside potential. The QQQ also has upside potential for about the 498.5 area. Could push hard, then we'll see if it gets a rejection or not, but look for more upside on the QQQ and the NASDAQ. The market's getting pushed by tech, but this is going to be dependent on earnings, so just don't forget about that. Apple could be range bound for now between 234 and 2. Uh, 31. So I just think, think it's going to consolidate for now, not really doing much, but look for that range to just maintain its structure. Um, looking at the IWM, we do have a risk of downside, but we did get bought up off 220. So look at 220 as our main support and resistance at 221. If we could get back above 221.19, we could be looking for 222 as our targets. And to be bullish, we want to break past 223. So right now it's looking like we had a high here. We came down at a lower high. So I think it's going to happen is this might try to push a little higher, but then there's that risk of it coming down to fill this gap later on. So I still see the risk of downside for the IWM in the future. AMD is looking bullish. We'll see what happens with earnings. It's obviously pushing, approaching them. So we're going to be looking for this uh, imbalance up here at 165 as our resistance just to see what kind of reaction we get. For coin, we're a little bit more uh, bearish. We pushed up to about 225 only to reject, so it could actually dip to 215. We'll see if that holds or not. If not, we're looking for 211. So 215 to 211 are going to be our targets, and we could bounce off one of those levels. Uh, but for now, look for a little bit more downside. Amazon looks more bullish, but we're just range bound between 184 and 190. Every time we hit 190, we reject. Every time we hit 184, we get bought back up. So for 190 is our target, then we'll see what kind of reaction we get. Meta is pushing for basically the 590 area. We'll see if we reject or not, but there is a little bit more upside potential. Microsoft is range bound. We have 430 as our resistance. Then we have support at 426 and 423. So I'm looking for 430 and a little bit above that just to see how we end up going. And then Google looks more bullish for 171 or above to 172.5. As of right now, I'm seeing more upside potential. It's pushing, approaching earnings, but just know this about Alphabet slash Google. Uh, we can't guarantee anything until we see what happens with earnings as well. So with that being said, guys, that is it for my analysis. Um, I want to thank you all so much for listening. The market's still kind of range bound, very, very choppy for a lot of these stocks. Tech is trying to push right now. We're seeing the tech sector gaining some momentum, but we'll see how things end up going moving forward. I'll give you guys one more update in just a couple of hours to talk about Alphabet's earnings. Until then, I thank you all so much for listening. So have a great day, and I'll be back very, very soon in just a few hours. Thanks again, and peace out.